My name is Rita J. King. In the virtual world of Second Life, I'm known as Eureka Deja Vu. My name is Joshua S. Fouts. In Second Life, I'm Schmilson Nilsson. We've been on a quest funded by a grant from the Richard Lounsbury Foundation. Join us on our journey as we visit mosques, temples, homes, and museums, meet people from all over the world, and explore the powerful global relationships that are developing across the frontier of the virtual world. The anonymity of virtual worlds creates a neutral platform that allows aspects of Islam to be examined without fear of judgment. We explored three areas across the virtual platform, collaboration, culture, and community. There are many examples of global collaboration and individual efforts to produce creative communities that provide insight into the roots of Islam. Our journey brought two of these projects to light. The first, a virtual recreation of ancient Mesopotamia. The second is a construction of the Ummah of Nur Mosque. The Federation of American Scientists in Washington, D.C. has built, in the virtual world of Second Life, a 3D replica of ancient Mesopotamia. Archaeologist Alice Petty gave us a tour. The idea first came out of a collaborative project focused on the origins of writing. This site of Warka, of ancient Uruk, is best known as the hometown of the epic hero Gilgamesh. The earliest examples of writing, which we have recovered in Iraq, were found in the city of Uruk. I would just love for when people to hear Iraq, for there to be some image or idea that comes into their mind other than an unjust war, other than the quagmire, other than the violence. Muslima Questi lives with her parents in the United Arab Emirates. She has recently completed construction of the mosque and took us on a tour. I came to Second Life to meet other religions, to seek out a different view of the world. My goal is to display as much as I can for the others if they're interested. Talk, collaboration, community. As we sat down to study the Quran during the call to prayer at the Ummah of Nur Mosque, we discussed our next stop, the experimental community of Al-Andalus. Al-Andalus is a community in Second Life. Al-Andalus's sultana, Rose Springvale, took us for a tour. The idea had been we'd go back to those original principles that were in place during the height of the Al-Andalusian period in the 13th century, where we had cultures, Muslims, Jews, Christians, not only coexisting, but thriving, creating a society that was really unmatched in history. I'm a Methodist from Indiana. I didn't even know what Islam was till I went to college. But I have children, and I live in Houston now. For us, it became a personal thing, particularly after 9-11, to try to understand different cultures and communicate so that war isn't always the answer. Peace, however, is not the absence of conflict. Rose told us how she routinely clashes about virtual attire in the mosque with an all-Andalus resident named Mohammed a 20-year convert to Islam. He was very upset that people might go inside the mosque with shoes on, and he was just very, very angry and wanted to ban them from the sim, and that's totally against what we're about. Ali Zurbino is a Pakistani-born Muslim. He runs a charity that provides halal food to the poor of Canada. His real-world charity has a Second Life office. We channel the donations from Muslims and deliver to the food bank for the use of everyone. We have been very successful in the virtual world. As a matter of fact, all my donations come through Internet. And I wanted to tell non-Muslims that we have many, many things in Islam which are highly desirable and beneficial to the society. In fact, he had just such an opportunity when a woman teleported into his Second Life office. And she announced that she is a Jewish girl and she wants to talk to a Muslim. Ali explained that their conversation highlighted for him the power of virtual worlds as a unique place for dialogue. Which I believe may not be possible in the real world. I live in Arkansas. If you enter the mosque here to see the light come through the latticework, to get the feeling of what it must be like to walk into a mosque, that's an experience that I cannot get in real life. Everyone here is just trying to be open-minded and trying to learn a little bit more. What we should be doing globally in the real life is basically what we're doing here in Second Life. Professor Carey studied the Andalusian period 
and sees it as a metaphor for me of cooperation and tolerance that leads to productivity and creativity. But here in Second Life, I can actually create a persona that reflects more what I understand myself to be. An altered look about the hills, a tear in light the village fills. As we listened to Pip's readings, we thought about each avatar as a voice furthering the understanding of a new global culture. Breathe Swindlehurst gave us a tour of the Hajj, created for Muslims and non-Muslims in Second Life. The sight of the Kaaba is an extremely, extremely emotional experience for Muslims. In the physical world, we would have bathed and said the following prayer. Which means, I come to you, Allah, to perform the Hajj. So make us live in peace and die in peace and permit us into paradise, the abode of peace. All the Hajj experience is built around the story of Ibrahim and his wife and his son Ismail. The black stone fell from the sky from paradise, but it was blackened by the sins of people. The next step is we leave Mecca and we go to the place called Mina. The pilgrims spend the night here and this night is called the Eve of the Arafat. When Adam and Eve were created and when they came down to earth, each of them came in a different place and they were looking for each other. They actually met each other on top of Mount Arafat, which is why Arafat in Arabic means meeting. This is one of the most interesting parts of Hajj. They start throwing the Jamarat. These are the pebbles that were collected. The stone throwing is a symbolic event. It is a symbol of stoning Satan or the devil. As we ended our virtual Hajj, we realized that although we did not have tired limbs and suffer exhaustion along with millions of others focused on one God, we did glimpse the underpinnings of an event that draws millions of people in the physical world more and more each year. Storytelling is a tremendously important part of Muslim culture, and an increasing number of Muslims are finding, in a virtual world, a way to inhabit, share, and reflect on cultural tradition in a changing physical world.